Hi, this is Fred, and let's welcome and profile Ted Leonard from the great progressive rock band Spock's Beard. How are you doing, Ted? Doing fantastic. It's great to be talking to you, Fred. Thanks. Uh, Spock's Beard brand new album, Noise Floor, will be released on May 25th. Uh, this will be Spock's uh, 13th studio album. Anything you can share about the concept, if any, and the songwriting process? Um, it's definitely no singular concept. There's, you know, it's a collection of songs, kind of like the last two albums. I mean, um, I think Spox only really has one concept album to date. <laughs> but, uh, but in any case, um, yeah, the the songwriting was a, a lot more kind of a band collaborative effort this time, and we still have this the same um, the same guys helping from the outside with John Bakehold and and Stan Osman. And, um, and, but, uh, but Al and Rio and I collaborated on a couple different songs. So this was actually the first time I got to collaborate with Rio, which was pretty cool. And so he and I wrote the song Beginnings. Nice. And yeah, I mean, the, the process is, has, is what it's always been, which is kind of a mixture of <clears throat> recording from home and some studio recording in you know, Rich Mouser's studio, the Mouse House. So you all came up with your own, like, songs, and then you worked together on them. Yeah, generally, you know, what what other people hear is a pretty completed demo um, by the time it gets to the other members, you know. Uh, and then it's a matter of taking that demo home, and if you're recording from home, and just putting your stamp on it and, um, and interpreting you know, and that's kind of um, that's kind of the way it's been for you know a few years, right. and it's 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 becoming more and more common too in bands. It's very rare that five people stand in a room and hash out a song anymore. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's because you know they live in L.A. I live in Northern California. It just wouldn't be very convenient. Uh, what about the title "Noise Floor"? Would that where'd that come from? Um, as with every title we've we've had since I've been in the band, all three of them anyway, um, it was really just uh, people putting out phrases that, and you know it's it's always just kind of like oh that sounds cool. <laughs> so like the Oblivion Particle and Brief Nocturnes and Dreamless Sleep had nothing to do with the content of the album. Um, so in much the same way, it's, this is kind of like that. Uh, noise floor, you know, to me, it's it's just it's it's a great phrase. It conjures up really cool, Im, you know, possible imagery and stuff. So, and then you know, the guy who did our artwork really ran with it. So it turned out really cool. Yeah, it's very nice, very very nice. Uh, what are the key differences to noise floor compared to the previous uh, Spock's Beards album? I think compared to the the Oblivion Particle, this one. The Oblivion Particle got a reputation of being a, a grower. Um, so, like, it, a lot of people felt like when they first got it, it didn't immediately grab them. This song, this album's a little bit more immediate, I think. I think it grabs you right away with, with a lot of the songs. And um, so it's, yeah, it's different in that regard. And I think that the variety... Between, from song to song is is pretty dramatic on this album when you have songs like so this is life that are almost like a slow beetle you know beetles kind of vibe yeah. and going straight into one so wise which is very classic Spox. um you know it's it's it has a lot of peaks and valleys and it's, i think it makes a pretty interesting collection it sure does i, I love this is life uh Noise Floor is a single CD uh, of eight songs plus a bon bonus four songs EP called Cutting Room Floor. So can can you tell us more about the song selection process and how Inside Out's uh, Thomas Weber was involved in the selection? Uh, he's he's almost always involved in the uh, in the song order and selection, and it's usually kind of a surprise. Uh, and we actually we do we trust his opinion quite a bit. Um, this time around, he wanted the prop. He wanted the CD to be really short. Um, I think the 
from a marketing standpoint, sometimes it's easier for reviewers to wrap their head around an eight song CD rather than a, a 12 song CD, you know? Um, but uh, we just, we kind of disagree with that notion. So the compromise became, well, we'll just put out a second <laughs> CD um, and, you know, just include everything we wanted to include on the, the album. And I think if we had our druthers, we probably would have just had a big, long album, because this would have fit on one CD, really. Yeah. But, um, but I do think that the flow of the first eight songs would have been broken up a little bit by some of the other tunes. And, you know, despite the fact that they're great, I, I love Days Will Remember and Bulletproof. <clears throat> and um, so it's kind of like the, the Brief Nocturne CD was kind of the same way. We didn't name the second CD, but there was a bonus CD that had some really cool stuff on it. And, um, you know, it's kind of, it's... It was. It's like it's too. It's too good. It's too done to leave off the album and just save for the next one. <laughs> so, and there's always more material for the next album anyway. So, okay. So, personally, do you call it a double album or a single album? It's definitely not a double album because the the length of the second CD, you know, it's pretty. It's just it's just an EP, really. Um, if you want to call it that, it, I just I kind of think of it as one big album. Okay, yeah. Uh, th this is your third Spock's Beard album, as you men mentioned it, uh, as the lead singer. Uh, going back to 2011, when you took that role, tell us how did that go, like knowing you had huge shoes to, to fill? Um, yeah, I mean, when I... when it, it was kind of cool that it wasn't so sudden. You know, because because um, it started out as just filling in on certain dates, and um, I think I probably it probably would have been more overwhelming if if uh, if they had just come to me and said, "Hey, we want you to audition to be the the new singer." I I think I, that would have been scarier, uh, but 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 because uh, because I'd already done the dates, you know, we already had a rapport, we already knew each other really well from having toured twice, <clears throat> and then Dave and I. Um, do a, a cover band together, so we work together all the time. And now Jimmy's in that band, although now he's not in Spocks. But um, <laughs> but at the time when I joined, uh, <clears throat> Dave and I had, had already been working together quite a bit, so he was already he already knew what I can do, you know. And I already loved Spock's beard; I was a huge fan, and so it was pretty natural to step in there. Um, but, but of course, you know, when you put out the album, the the first album with me on it, Brief Nocturnes, there's all this, you know, I'm, I'm kind of chewing my fingernails a bit going, oh, are people going to receive me, you know, or are they going to go, no way, you know, I, did, I always kind of likened it to being the third singer for uh, for Van Halen, like, I don't want to be the Gary Sharon of the, uh, of the Spock's Beard legacy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no offense, Gary. <laughs> Uh, understood Nick Virgilio's busy schedule does not allow him to uh, to be a full-time Spock's Beard Band member but what about a possible tour to promote the new album you guys have a plan already to replace uh, we do have, yeah we do have a <clears throat> we do have some tentative plans going right now that I can't really get too specific about because they're not in stone yet um, but there has been some tentative plans to do something over in Europe and UK um, and but nothing on the you know, state side aside from unless you count the cruise okay. yeah which so, and then, looking forward to it yeah you're gonna be on that one too oh yes I will and for those of you who are listening um, Fred was kind enough to let me bum a couple cigarettes on the last cruise just so you know <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, Spock's Beard has been releasing albums for more than 23 years uh, now. So how do you explain the band's longevity? Um, you know, I, that, that's a good question. I mean, I think for the most part, um, it's just camaraderie. And, uh, you know, and it's one, it, when you're part of something, you know, when these guys who've been part of the band forever when you're part of something that has that kind of uh, legacy to it it's it's 
it's hard to put it on the shelf. You know, it's hard to, to say, okay, we're done. Um, and, you know, if how can a 90s band, a 90s progressive rock band, ever call it quits and not feel like a bunch of wussies? I mean, considering all these 70s bands that are still going. You know, <laughs> they've got 20 years on us, and, and they're still going. So w w we have no excuse. Uh, how do you think the progressive rock has evolved through the years, like, from the 70s, moving on, moving on? Um, you know, much in the same way that, that evolution happens in any form, I think it's when it's usually blending two different ideas. You know, metal was not a part of Prague um, when it first started. There were, metal didn't really exist. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, but then eventually you're going to have a kid who likes Metallica and likes Yes, and they're going to find other kids that like both bands, and they're going to, you know, grow their hair long and call themselves Dream Theater, and that's, that's how uh, the evolution happened. I think you see a lot more of an inclusion of, of metal in this genre. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's the biggest change that I've seen. I think from a songwriting and from a musicianship standpoint, it's very much um, the, the kids that are making prog now are every bit as talented. I think, they, I think the market is almost oversaturated, so it's, I think it's a little harder for the kids starting out because um, there's so many bands now. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, I mean, and I... And I, I was never a metal guy myself. I love Dream Theater, but um, so I just, you know, I, I wasn't even, I wasn't going to go that direction. I mean, you know, Thought Chamber was about as close as I came. Uh, doing, oops, sorry. To doing anything that heavy, anyway. Yeah. Uh, what about you? You've been also in, in the industry for for about 25 years. Anything you can share about your personal? plans and, and future projects? World domination. I love it. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I, I, there's, there are uh, other things in the works. I can tell you that. I can't get too specific about it. But it, will, it may or may not involve some Canadian friends of mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll let the I'll let the rumor mill um, rumor mill. That's a hard word to say. Rumor mill. Sure, you know, with with that in mind. And then you know, there's another project that that I've been thinking about taking on too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I have no intention on slowing down, you know, the musical output or anything like that. I I still feel young. And you still well, are. Yeah. Most most of the time. <laughs> Yeah, we at Profile, we like to conclude the, uh, an interview with a few questions that uh, only require one-word answers. So are you up for this? I think so. Yeah, you can say pass if you wish not to answer. Is that a, yeah, that's still one word. <laughs> What is your favorite song from the noise floor? <laughs> that's that's not fair. No, none of the songs have just one word. <laughs> you've already you've already destroyed the whole premise of this. Uh, how do I do that? There's all the so, there's only there's, so one to five words. <laughs> answers. <laughs> Somebody's home. Somebody's home. Who's your favorite prog rock singer? Man. Are you serious? I, I can't use one word. He's got two. He's <laughs> so one, one word to five. One to five words. Okay. Okay. You're changing the rules on me now. Yeah, I am. I'm flexible. I think I still, I still have to say Steve Walsh. Okay. Uh, one country you haven't had a chance to play live and you always wish you could. Hmm. That's a good question. I've played in a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't I don't know that there's any that you know that I that I really want to that I haven't played. I mean there's there's plenty of countries 
there's maybe countries I'd like to visit. This, this isn't. I'm not doing very well at the one word thing, am I? <laughs> That's the fun part of it. Yeah. You know what? Russia. Russia. That's a good one. Yes, Genesis or Gentle Giant? Genesis. Which one would you prefer? A Spock's Beard Festival or a Spock's Beard Cruise? Uh, a festival, just because the cruise would be too poorly attended. It would be depressing. Nah, it would not. <laughs> one word to describe noise floor. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't know. Name one band you wish you could see live for the first time. See live for the first time? Yes. I'd rather answer that by saying I wish I could see Kansas when they were in the 70s. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's apart from... That's the other thing is I think I've seen all the bands that I would have <laughs> wanted to see. Well, no, you know what? I would have wanted to see Queens right back in the late 80s, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, very nice. So, uh, what is the last album you've purchased? Jeez. <laughs> I can't even remember. It's been that long. I Honestly, I cannot remember. I, I don't purchase albums anymore. That's a horrible thing to say when you're on, trying to promote an album, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> But I do, I have, you know, I do uh, occasionally, I do pay for the download, though. I don't, I'm not one of those guys. But I can't even remember the last thing I downloaded. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I take that back. I, uh, it's funny. All of my answers are Kansas. But I did get, I did buy the new Kansas album. Yeah, which is great. And I also bought, I also bought on the same day, and this was just last year, I bought um, Jeff Tate's album. Yes. His, uh, yeah, and that's right. Yeah, I was bitterly disappointed with that. <laughs> and the last one, a musician you would love to perform live with. With, hmm, Steve Morse. Oh, nice. Well, that that's it, uh, Ted. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for uh, having me. I wish you the best success possible with the brand new album Noise Floor to be released on May 25th. And it was That's great sweet. to talk to you. Yeah, don't don't be like me. Actually buy it. Oh, yeah. It's already <laughs> purchased, pre-ordered. All right. Well, thanks, Fred. It's good right. talk to you. It was great to talk right. to you. Take care. Cheers.